Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Talking Cryptocurrency Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Rigdon. On this episode of the show, we're talking to Eli Calderon Morin of All EBT. All EBT is bringing blockchain technology to government benefits programs. They're bringing that EBT card into the 21st century. This could help the government save money and help folks get healthier food. This is a great interview. Eli is using this revolutionary technology to make the lives of people better. It is very admirable, and I'm proud to have him on the show. Before we get to the interview, I have a quick message. Hello, if you like this episode and you want to hear more like it, please make sure you subscribe to the podcast. That way you won't miss a single episode. The Talking Cryptocurrency Podcast is available on all the podcast clients. You can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever else you get your podcasts. If a podcast isn't your thing, I publish video versions of these interviews on YouTube and DTube. You can subscribe to those too. The links are in the show notes. Hello, today we have a representative from All EBT. Would you mind introducing yourself to my audience? Hi, my name is Eli Calderon Morin, and I'm the founder and CEO of All EBT. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Could you tell us a little bit about the uh, problem you're trying to solve? Yes, I'm def- I'm excited to be here, first of all. Um, oh, fantastic. Yeah, I think, thanks so much for reaching out. So the problem we're working on, it, it's a problem real close to home, and it's a problem that just wouldn't go away. Uh, basically, it's food stamps. So if you take a look at the U.S. population, about 22% of the U.S. population is on food stamps. And one of the ridiculous things is they're still using coupons, paper coupons, and basically closed looped debit cards. And, and the problem with these two things is that they don't work online. So if you're on food stamps, you can't buy anything online. Uh, you can't make any types of transactions on like Amazon Fresh, Instacart, DoorDash, Postmates, Uber Eats. Basically, you're just cut off from the whole digital economy. And, you know, that's pretty hard. You know, if you're on food stamps, you know, these are these are people that they can make use of technology more than anybody. What we did, uh, well, that's, that's basically the problem. I, I can get into the solution after that. But. Yeah. Yeah, so how are you yeah, trying to so, solve this problem? So what we did is we said, let's um, let's create something that allows people to start shopping online. So we created a wallet. We created a digital wallet that allows people to basically convert their food stamp credits into online credits. And then from there, they can start making transactions online. So it's a digital wallet. Uh, the first iteration is basically still functioning on, on the fiat system. But, uh, you know, second iteration is definitely going going crypto. And, and, and that's, uh, I guess that's the, the idea behind this, this uh, podcast. Yeah, yeah. So um, you said about being able to buy food online. Would that help people that are in the, uh, I believe they call them the food deserts? Exactly. You can have hit it right on the mark. So there's a lot of different types of people that are on food stamps. Whether it's a single mother that has a challenge getting to the supermarket, or if it's somebody that's disabled and doesn't um, doesn't have proper transportation, um, and and basically technology allows them to to order food online through their phone, and you know when we talk about food stamps, you know things can get political very quickly, but. Uh, Regardless of anybody's political views on who deserves what, um, we we basically see that technology is uh, basically the factor that can kind of like democratize access to these financial services, and especially when it comes to food. So, what have been some of the challenges of developing this? Well, you know, startups are always a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, it, basically, it's 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 about not giving up and just pushing forward. Um, Specific challenges, uh, you, you know, I think working within the regulations of the USDA, mm-hmm. that, that's something that we really uh, put a lot of attention and, and effort towards to work within the guidelines that they've set up. So that's one of our, uh, I wouldn't say a challenge, but definitely one of the one of the areas of focus. Um, and, and then working with all, all the different policymakers that, 
you know, this is a lot of old, old politics, a lot of old systems that are in place. And we're, we're basically, um, you know, using you know, cutting edge te- technology to, to give people what they want. And sometimes people get a little uncomfortable with that. So we want to make sure that, you know, we're working within the ex- existing guidelines from the USDA, working with local governments, working with local city councils, and really just um, addressing the problem. And the problem is people that are on food stamps should be able to uh, utilize their mobile device to start making transactions online. So are you doing this as a regional effort or is this a nationwide thing? Yep. So we've launched in Los Angeles okay. and we're okay. starting off, uh, you know, I grew up in LA and, you know, as a kid, you know, I, I saw firsthand, you know, my parents struggling on food stamps and, you know, even growing up to, to this day, there's, you know, a lot of people in my community that, that still struggle to put food on the table. So, you know, because of, because I grew up in, in one of these communities, I said, you know what, we need to build technology that's, that that's you know, has an impact on, on it's more on, inclusive. It's more inclusive. Yeah, yeah, it definitely has an impact for that that hits hits close to home. Um, I used to work at a couple different startups doing a bunch of different like artificial intelligence, speech recognition, image recognition. A couple companies, um, one of them got acquired by Google, another got acquired by Amazon. So I worked in the Silicon Valley for a long time, and then I finally said, you know what? We got to build something for people that are in my neighborhood, and you know the area that I live in uh, in Los Angeles. It's a uh, it's a small community called El Sereno or Lincoln Heights, and okay. it's a uh, high penetration. Uh, people are on food stamps. So, how was it when you were uh, first approaching the government agencies? Well, we basically uh, try just try to be as transparent as possible, and they uh, they see the benefit, and they and they want to support that. Um, and it's just uh, you have to make them feel comfortable. So it's been good to the, to this point. It's been fine. Uh, we haven't had any issues, and uh, we look we have we have three different customers that we're really focusing on. And uh, the first one is is the most important one, and that's the consumers, um, the people that are on food stamps. And we want to make sure we're giving them a product that really makes sense, that gives them value. And then the second segment of customers. Um, which we're not focusing on right now at this moment, but we have plans on later, is the merchants. So merchants want to be able to accept food stamps, but they're unable to. And especially if they're doing transactions online or if they're doing things on mobile, they haven't even gotten that far yet. So that's another group, that's another segment, a uh, customer segment. And then the third customer segment is is the government. So we see you know, through our use of technology, we probably could save them whew, tens of millions of dollars in, in uh, just bureaucracy and fees that, that get wasted through the program. Has it been hard to sell the individuals receiving the benefits on this? It might be their first time encountering cryptocurrency in like actual day-to-day life. You know, it's one of the misconceptions um, that I run into a lot, but people that are on food stamps, um, they have a really high penetration of mobile usage, and okay. mobile is their first device. So they're using their mobile device uh, over a computer or over any other type of technology. So they're really mobile first, and they're comfortable with with different messaging platforms and messaging apps, and you know all these different uh, you know ways to to get services and and do commerce. So in terms of the users we we basically the demand was just so high we had to we had to put everything on a wait list it was it was really ridiculous yeah well that's really good to hear people so enthusiastic about it and the ease of use was so good that they they instantly got it and weren't afraid absolutely yeah no. so what are your plans for the future with this system so we're we're launching a pop-up store um we have a store here in los angeles and then we're going to be launching another store on the East Coast, uh, probably uh, North Carolina, Charlotte area. And then we're also launching another store in Puerto Rico, which is uh, oh, okay. it's yeah. another hub uh, of uh, crypto activity and, and pretty much uh, innovation. And we're really excited about um, what we're going to do in the summer over there. We're, we're basically going to launch a, launch a pilot program out of Puerto Rico, um, 
working around uh, getting these people that are on food stamps online. Oh, that's very cool. So it sounds like a really innovative project and really trying to help people. Um, is there anything that maybe I should have asked you that I missed? You know, I, I think this is just a good conversation. I think uh, if if we can just bring attention to the fact that, you know, 22% of the U.S. population, 54 million people live on food stamps and, and they rely on it for their, you know, basically to put food on the table. And all of those people are just like you and me. You know, there are neighbors, there are friends. Their veterans, their mother, their children, their seniors. Uh, it's the whole spectrum of people. And the ridiculous thing is that they're unable to make use of uh, mobile technology and just not even talking about crypto yet, but they're, they're unable to interact online um, to, to make food purchases. So that's what we're trying to solve. We're trying to get, give them a solution where they can, you know, just as easily order something on Amazon Fresh as as going to the supermarket. Yeah, and if you can make the system more efficient, then that means more money for the people. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, this project is uh, really great. I, I'm really inspired by it. I'm so thankful to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Oh, I appreciate you. Thank you for reaching out. And if anybody needs to get a hold of me, you can reach me at Eli at A-L-L-E-B-T dot com. Or um, you can feel free to check out our website, which is www.all ebt.com www.allebt.com fantastic i'll make sure i have all those in the show notes too um thank you so much for coming on the show thank you everybody talk to you soon thanks eli for coming on the show all ebt is a refreshing project it's a solution for solving real world problems and it has the potential to improve so many lives if you want more information about the project i've got links in the show notes you can also check out their Facebook page and find info about their pop-up store in LA. You've been listening to the Talking Cryptocurrency Podcast. My name is Jason Riggin. I've been your host. Thanks for listening to the show. If you liked it, please consider giving us a rating and a review. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Have a good day.